I would like to welcome our speaker for the workshop tonight, somebody that we know very well. But I think there's some things about him that you may not know, that actually the tut of the last name is actually a lineage that goes all the way back to Egypt, right? <laughs> wow. You don't know yes or no, but that's okay. Huh. Sounds, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Huh? We can go with that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, can everyone hear me? I'm not sure if I was getting my sound levels right or not, but Linda can adjust if, if we need to. Uh, okay, so tonight's workshop is called Divine Dynamics, and the subtitle is The Science of Manifesting Miracles. So as most of you know, I have spent most of my life researching the power of miracles, researching how can we perform miracles in our lives and create things the way we want them to be. Uh, Christ promised that if we pray and believe that, believe that we will receive the answer to our prayer, we will as long as we believe in it. And after going through a lot of different avenues, researching how do we make contact with the spirit realm, how do we channel that divine energy through us, how do we direct that divine energy into our lives, I did find that faith is the most important factor. In fact, as those who have attended my harmonic prayer workshops know, there are three factors that I found that are central to manifesting miracles. Faith is the big one. Focus is another one. You've got to be able to focus on what you want and keep your mind focused away from the things you don't want. And feeling was the third aspect which when I originally wrote the book that was the Harmonic Prayer book, I wasn't completely clear on what that feeling aspect was. I just knew that when I got good results from my prayers, there was a certain feeling that came along with the experience of, of the prayer. And I couldn't quite identify it at that time. I have since learned that that feeling aspect is composed of two things. One is a very deep state of relaxation. And in fact, on a scientific level, we can say that our brain waves shift away from beta and go down into either alpha or theta. And so that's a very hard physical uh, definition of how deeply relaxed we need to be in order to make contact with the divine. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is to put ourselves into a positive emotional state. And that could be love, it could be gratitude, it can be uh, joy, it can be even sensual pleasure, it can be a good positive emotion that helps us to resonate with the divine. And then when we're relaxed and we're resonating with the divine and we're focused on the thing that we actually want to have happen in our lives, that's when prayer works the best. And so after 30 plus years of researching how can we perform miracles, miracles in our lives, this was the final answer that I came down to that worked better than everything else that I've tested. And as most of you know, I've tested just about everything. Um, if there's a few things that have slipped through, they're pretty similar to things that I have tested. But since all of that, and, and I did do the workshop last year on the harmonic prayer. Since then, I continue to do more research. I continue to test other things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I have become known for, at least one of my taglines that I use in my business quite often, is I am all about getting maximum results with minimum effort. I wanna get the best results poss possible while doing the least amount that I can get away with. Mm -hmm. And ideally, the, the nth degree of that would be to be able to manifest everything that I ever want without doing a thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not actually possible. <laughs> However, there is a way of getting close. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, However, I will go ahead and shortcut the process a little bit for you because we only have 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to give you the secret to it right now. 
And the thing is, is rather than do what I used to do way back when, when I first got started, I, I used to focus my mind on manifesting this thing on this day. And then the next thing I wanted, I'd focus on manifesting that thing on that day. And then the next time I wanted something, I'd focus on manifesting that thing on that day. Mm -hmm. And so I was always working on manifesting every single day almost. One thing after another, after another, after another. And so I was constantly working mm -hmm. at manifesting. What I have eventually learned is that if I forget about the details and focus on the general life that I want. It's kind of, it's kind of like there's a, there's a story about um, you find the genie and you get three wishes. <laughs> and I, I know I've seen a bunch of movies with this. I'm sure you've seen at least one or two. Inevitably, the people who get that opportunity are wishing for things like money or love or a house or a car, yeah. the little things. Like I was doing when I first started manifesting. I wanted to manifest this, or I wanted to manifest that. I wanted to manifest this. Eventually, I did read a story where someone kind of outwitted the genie and was able to combine a bunch of different things in one wish. And I can't remember the details of that, but I can tell you that if I had that genie, I would only wish for one thing. I just want a thousand years of happiness. <laughs> One wish covers everything. <laughs> and so, in a way, when we want to get maximum results with minimum effort, we go through a prayer process to pray for the thing that we really do want. Happiness. Enjoyment. If we want the love, that's part of, that's part of happiness. I am most happy when I'm experiencing love. I am most happy when I am able to help other people. Yeah. I am happy when I have the freedom to go places and do things the way I want to do them. And so if I focus on manifesting happiness, everything else is covered. Mm -hmm. And so that's the focus for tonight. How do we manifest a lifetime of happiness? And if it's 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, that's up to you. So. In the process of manifesting, as I mentioned earlier, I found that there were three main factors that lead to effective manifestation, effective prayer. Faith, focus, and feeling. Feeling is the relaxation and the release of joy. And then that brings us into contact with the divine essence of the universe. It's like making a call. You've got to dial the number first before you can talk to anybody. Well, when you're praying, you've got to make contact first before you can do anything. So relax and release joy. OK, so three factors, faith, focus, feeling. We covered the faith, focus, being able to focus on what you want with the ability to focus away from all the things we don't want. And I will admit that can be difficult. It's easy to say. It's not always as easy to do. I mean, if someone's yelling at you, it's kind of hard to focus on peace. Yeah. If your body is hurting, it's kind of hard to focus on the idea of help. Yeah. So I understand that that's not always easy to do, but it is the objective. So faith, focus, and then the feeling, again, that's also in the relaxation and the joy. Faith, okay, that's right, faith. Faith is really the most important thing. Trusting that what we have done in our prayers will actually produce a result. Mm -hmm. And that, as, as, as I talked about in the Choose to Believe material, I brought in a, a bunch of books. Anybody who doesn't already have a copy of my book is welcome to take one. If you do have a copy, you're still welcome to take one. You can give it away, do whatever you want to with it. So be my guest, take as many as you want. Um, but as that book talks about, if we can get our faith right, if we can truly believe that the things that we want will actually happen, they will happen. Just as Christ said, if you ask or tell that mountain to go throw itself into the sea, as long as you believe it and do not doubt, it will happen. And I believe that's a great example because who 
is helped by having the mountain throw itself into the sea. It's a useless thing to do, but it will still happen. Christ didn't say, well, you can pray for things that will help others, and it will happen. You can pray for other people, but not yourself. He didn't say that. He didn't put limits on what you can pray for. You can pray for anything, and it will happen, as long as you have the faith. Now, as I was just about ready to say, when I wrote the Choose to Believe book, I was cataloging every possible way to change our level of faith. I was looking at affirmations. I was looking at visualization. I was looking at hypnosis. I was looking at prayer. I was looking at daydreaming. I was looking at all sorts of different things, including NLP ad adaptations to all of those. I mean, some of you may remember that in the idea of affirmations, most of us know that affirmations are a statement of what we want to have happen as if it is a current reality. I am rich. I am healthy. I am worthy of all good things. Whatever thing that you want to have manifest, an affirmation is a statement of that thing as a current reality. The NLP variation of that that I talked about in the Choose to Believe book starts out with a series of what they call pacing statements, things that you already believe to be true. My name is Alan Tutt. I am now here at the Coptic Center. I'm talking to you fine folks. Statements that I believe are absolutely true statements. And by repeating absolutely true statements, we can bring up a feeling of faith and trust. This is true. What I am saying is correct. And then you say your chosen affirmation, I have all the money I can ever want. And then the feeling of faith and trust that comes up from those pacing statements gets linked to the leading statement, the thing that we want to have manifest. And that builds faith in an idea faster than just repeating the one affirmation by itself. Since writing that book, I have found that at least in my experience, the process of prayer, the way I've been talking about with the harmonic prayer, is the best and fastest way of shifting our beliefs that I have ever found. And this process can be described as three simple steps. Relax, imagine, and trust. And each of those three steps is one of those key factors that I was just talking about. The feeling, relaxation, the, ima the focus, the imagination, and the faith, which is the trust. So let's start out. OK, this is supposed to be a workshop, not a lecture. <laughs> so let's just take a few minutes and relax. And we don't need to turn down the lights, because this is going to be pretty quick. And so <coughs> however you want to sit is fine. I'm not going to tell you to sit. Sit with your feet flat on the floor, hands in your laps, palms facing up. But if that's what's comfortable for you, then go right ahead and do that. Uh, you don't have to close your eyes, but then again, if it's comfortable to do so, then you may go right ahead. Um, one thing I do find that is very helpful in relaxing is to just center my focus on my breathing and take a nice deep breath in. And then just let it flow out. And as the air flows out of your lungs, imagine that it is carrying with it all of the stress, all of the worry, all of the negativity that has collected over time. And then just breathe in again, fresh, clean air. Let that fresh oxygen blend into your body and energ energizing <coughs> you in many ways collecting all of that negativity before it heads right back out of your body again, clearing you of all stress, all worry. And do that a few times. Another visualization that helps me is to imagine that I have a root extending down into the heart of the earth, a grounding rod. And that is another channel through which negativity can flow out of me and go down into the earth to become renewed, re-energized, refreshed, and brought back out as positive energy. 
Another thing that helps me is to imagine time slowing down. There is no rush. There is no hurry. There is no time. All is peaceful. And another visualization that also helps me is to imagine that I am a pool of water. I have released all tension and I am just collapsed into a pool of water. Feel free to use any visualization that helps you to become more relaxed and go even deeper within yourself, deeper and deeper into that divine essence that is within you. And as you approach the inner sanctum of your being, <coughs> you are making contact with the divine essence, the true self of who you are. And within this space, you can ask for a symbol to represent this level of connection, this divine connection within you. And the symbol could be a color, it could be a sound, it could be an image. Allow your deeper mind to show you a symbol that represents this level of divine connection and to remember that symbol. And then when you are ready, you may come back to the surface, bringing your symbol with you so that it may be used in other sessions. Okay, so anybody want to share what their symbol was? Don't. Mine is a swan, which is kind of unusual. It just mm -hmm. came to me. Cool. Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> it's a lovely. Mine is three circles intertwined. Kind of like the Olympic. No, yes. that's five, isn't it? That's five seasons. Okay. Three but and they're purple. Three purple circles. Okay. That's great. That's great. So whatever symbol that you want, the idea here is that when you want to make contact with the divine within yourself, you can use the symbol to quickly make that contact. So that when you are in a situation where you want quick help, like you're driving down the highway and you see something up ahead that looks like it could be dangerous, and you want to make a prayer that says, get me through this safely. You can use that symbol to make that contact, mm -hmm. think the thought, and trust that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's one of those other enhancements that I've learned since writing the Harmonic Prayer Book. So, okay, time for me to check my notes, make sure that I am where I need to be here. I haven't missed anything. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, three weeks ago, John asked me if I can do the workshop for tonight, and I said, sure, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I had a basic idea of what I wanted to do, but it was only a couple of days ago when I actually sat down to map it out. Okay, mm -hmm. this, is, this is how I want to do it. So, okay, we're doing good. So we've got that relaxation stuff. You, you felt what it feels like to relax deeply and make contact with your inner mind. Of course, most people here are familiar with that. This is not an unusual experience for you. Yeah. Um, and so this is fairly easy. I can skip ahead. The imagination step. Now, this is where we imagine what we want to manifest. When we have made that contact with the divine self within, we want to imagine the thing that we want to have manifest. And it can be literally anything. Like Christ said, there's no limits to this. You can imagine anything, ask for it in prayer, and as long as you believe that you will receive it, yeah. you will. And it could be as simple as, I need $20 to, to buy groceries tomorrow. Or it could be, okay, I need to make rent payment this month. I need a little extra there. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what, I'm feeling bored. I want, some, I, I want something fun to do. <laughs> 
I mean, it can be it can be pretty much anything. Um, it doesn't have to be anything specific. Or, as the example tonight goes, I want a thousand years of happiness. That's what I want to imagine. I want to imagine that everything in my life is perfect. Everything goes smoothly. I'm having a ball every single day of my life. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And there are no problems whatsoever. And so that can be the, the thing that you focus on. One of the things that I have found that helps both the relaxation phase and the imagination phase it <coughs> is a, basically what I call a mental indulgence. And that helps to evoke joy. It helps to evoke pleasure. It helps to relax you even more. And be, between both of those, it helps you make a stronger connection with the divine. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to bring in homemade ice cream today was to give you something to Thank you. imagine that is pleasurable. Of course, not everyone enjoys ice cream. I understand that. Uh, we had pumpkin pie in there, and we had chocolate cake. And, yeah. and of course, sweets are not always the, 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 the ideal thing anyways, but hey, I like them. <laughs> everything. There's a time and a place for everything. Yep. <laughs> so that was that was my reason for bringing in the ice cream today was to kind of give us something beforehand to imagine and go back to. So here we're going to do another little quick little exercise, mm -hmm. and this one is going to be on imagining something that feels good, and it doesn't have to be a sweet treat. It can be sitting by a fire, it can be sitting on a beach, it can be getting a massage, it can be anything that makes you feel good. And so here again, we're going to relax. And if you want to bring to mind that symbol that you were given earlier to help you reach that deep inner state of relaxation even faster, you can bring that symbol to mind. Imagine that the symbol of relaxation and divine connection is flowing throughout your entire body and is automatically sh shifting you from the outer state to the inner state. And as you shift inward, allow yourself to imagine something that feels very good. It can be something to eat. It can be the hug of a loved one. It can be sitting by a fire in a tub of water, by the beach, out in the sun. It can be dancing, skating, anything that you enjoy doing. Just imagine that you are doing something that feels incredible. And allow that feeling of joy and love come out and spread throughout your entire body. And when you feel this feeling of pleasure, this feeling of joy and love, allow yourself to think, right now, this moment is good. And this is the seed, the mustard seed, that grows into the glorious tree of blessings that will expand throughout your entire life. Because when you focus on this moment is good and stay in this moment and realize that this moment becomes the next moment, becomes the next moment, becomes the next moment. This feeling of goodness, this feeling of joy, this feeling of divine essence comes along with you into every moment. And it expands, it grows, it's brighter, more powerful. And it flows both forward and backward into the past, into the future, throughout every moment that ever exists. And by imagining this feeling of good, divine pleasure extending out throughout your entire life, you are now manifesting that. You are now improving every moment of your life, now and the future. And it will even change your memories of the past so that when you think back on moments that used to give you issues, they don't 
disturb you nearly as much as they did before. Mm -hmm. But there's no need to focus on that because our focus is on the moment. Our focus is on the pleasure. Our focus is on the divine essence that we are now channeling throughout our entire lives. And if you want to expand it even further, you can expand this feeling of divine blessing not only throughout your life, but throughout the lives of everyone on the planet, so that the whole world is blessed. And as they say, what goes around comes around. And as we send out blessings to the rest of the world, the rest of the world sends blessings back to us. And it's a divine synchronicity. It's an orchestra. It's a dance. It is absolute divine. And if you would like, you can ask your deeper divine self to give you a symbol for this feeling of divine pleasure, this enhanced connection that you now have with your divine spark. And again, it can be a color, it can be a sound, it can be an image. It can be anything. Just accept whatever is given to you now. And when you're ready, you may come back into the room around us, back into your physical body, and rejoin the rest of the session. This is the one I was worried about losing people with because when it feels that good, sometimes you don't want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how many people, I, I, I could tell that most of you felt the good feelings of pleasure. Was there anyone who felt like they had trouble with it? Okay, good. So you've all passed that one. <laughs> Okay, so the three steps of the harmonic prayer, relax, imagine, trust. We've just done the first two. We've relaxed, we've imagined a divine connection, and we've imagined that divine energy flowing throughout our entire life, blessing every moment that is to come. And so in one respect, we have already done the work to manifest a life of divine blessings. The only thing left to do is to trust that it has actually worked and that when you leave here tonight, you will actually start to see results of that manifestation. Mm -hmm. This is the point where most of us have trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the reason why we go through this process of relaxing as deeply as we can and focusing on the divine connection that we have within ourselves and imagining the thing that we want to manifest in as much detail as we possibly can. And I didn't really go through that much detail with you here. So um, I would understand if we didn't make that strong of a connection, but <clears throat> what I encourage you to do whenever you practice this process is when you are imagining the thing that you want to manifest, the thing that you're praying for, Imagine it as if it is happening right there with you. You're right in the middle of it. And it's just as real as the physical world around you. And you want to enter into that daydream as deeply as you can, as vividly as you can, and make it as real as you can. Because when you are that deeply relaxed and you can imagine it in that much detail, that automatically, the way our minds work, is that that automatically shifts our beliefs mm -hmm. so that it's easier to expect the thing that we want will actually happen. Mm -hmm. Most of you have heard the story that at one point in time, I was ready for a real relationship. This is before Linda and I got together. I was ready to change my life in a way that had never happened before. 
Before Linda, the longest relationship I ever had was 15 months. I was constantly moving from place to place and person to person. And I was ready to, let, let's just, I want something stable mm -hmm. was where I was at at that point. And I went through this process. Mm -hmm. Every night for a period of at least a few weeks, I would sit down for a half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. I would relax, I would get into this deep daydream and I would essentially just daydream about being in the type of relationship that I wanted. I visualized traveling. I visualized going to theater shows. I visualized listening to music. I visualized quite a number of different details. And a couple weeks into this process, one Wednesday afternoon, I just got this feeling like, you know what? It's been a while since I've been to a church that has a meditation service. I want to look, look this up. So I grabbed the yellow pages. I looked it up, found Unity and Ada. And... No. They, huh? It wasn't in Ada. That well, that's what it was. But uh -huh. basically, I found, I found a display ad in the Yellow Pages, Wednesday Night Meditations. It happened to be Wednesday. It's like, ah, I think I found my place. So I called. They weren't doing meditations anymore, but they had a class going. I went in for that. I started going to that church. A couple weeks later, as most of you have heard the story, I'm about ready to leave. Someone taps me on the shoulder, I turn around, I see her, and it's like, ah, you're the one I'm looking for. <laughs> of course, I didn't tell her that at the time. We got to chatting, we went to lunch, there was a concert that night that the two Unity churches were doing together. Went there, at the end of the concert, I asked her, when can I see her again? We got together again, I asked, when can I see her again? I kept going, and well, we're still together, so <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> And let's see, that was, this December will make 22 years. Wow. Oh, nice. So this prayer process does work. <laughs> and yeah, we, we can go into all sorts of details about the story, about how there were so many details yeah. that manifested as far as the, I was visualizing, okay, I've never, I never actually gone to theater shows before. I, I wanted that to be a part of the relationship. Well, she's a theater musician. Uh, I wanted music to be part of it. Well, she is a musician. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of different details, so we don't have to go through that right now. So the thing that I want to really stress is that by relaxing as deeply as we can and imagining the thing that we want to manifest in as much detail as we can, as if it is happening right here, right now, and we're right in the middle of it, that automatically shifts our beliefs. And so this last step of trusting doesn't have to be difficult because if we do this right, and we do it often enough, and like I said, I did this every night for a period of weeks, half an hour to an hour at a time, and that's what did it for me. So, that kind of gives you a ballpark of, of where it's at. Here's the other thing that I want to mention is that when you practice this and you do it over and over and over again, and it doesn't have to be for a specific thing like relationships or a job or money or a new house or anything like that, even though you can use the process for those specific things, you can also focus on, I just want to be happy. And if you focus on that above all else, anything that you need to be happy will come into your experience. If you need the car, if you need the house, if you need the relationship, if those are the things that will make you happy and you're praying for happiness, those things will come to you. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, um, two more things to mention about this trust aspect. Once you have practiced this enough, you will eventually get to the point where you can just skip to the trust. You can get to the point where you have relaxed enough, you have made a deep enough connection with the divine, you have become so good at channeling that divine energy through you 
that it becomes a part of who you are, even on an outer conscious level. So that when you want to manifest something, you don't even have to go through the process. You just think about it, say, it is done, and it will be done. It doesn't have to be difficult. In fact, one of the reasons why that book is called Choose to Believe is because when you really get down to it, it can be, I won't say it always will be, but it can be as easy as making a choice. Mm -hmm. I choose to believe that the money's coming to me. I choose to believe that I will be supported in this new venture. I choose to believe that I will be healthy. I choose to believe that whatever I need to change my state from what it is now to what I need it to be or what I want it to be, I choose to believe that whatever I need to get me there will come into my experience. And there are a number of stories in the book. I had an email list. Well, I still have an email list. But at the time, as I was writing the book, I had sent out an email to my mailing list asking for people to give me stories that could be included in the book about how they had changed their belief and what that did for them in their lives. And I was actually surprised at how many people were coming back and saying that they didn't actually do anything to change their belief. They just did it. They just decided all of a sudden that, okay, I'm going to live a new life now. I'm going to live this life the way I want to live it. And just by making the choice, their life changed. And so there's a few of those stories in that book um, that can go. And the other thing that I'm going to say is that one of the more powerful techniques of getting to that trust is, as Christ said, become as a little child. Play a game pretend. It's like, okay, I am going to pretend that I am a great speaker. <laughs> I am going to pretend that I'm going to come in tonight and this is going to be a fantastic workshop. <laughs> a couple hours ago, I wasn't exactly so sure, but <laughs> right now I'm feeling like it has manifested. Mm -hmm. So I hope that I have helped you see new possibilities for yourself. And have given you some tools that you can use to make the changes that you want to have made into your life. And mm -hmm. I believe that is probably it. Um, the only other thing that I will add is that as you go through day to day, whenever you start to feel doubt, whenever you start to feel anxiety, mm -hmm. whenever you start to feel any kind of worry or fear, that's a signal that says your beliefs are not supporting the direction you want to go. That's your signal to go back into the prayer process and refresh the manifestation, to refresh the divine energy going out forward to support you and to manifest the things that you want. Whenever you feel doubt, fear, worry, anxiety, any of those kind of things, that's your signal. It's time to pray. It's time to make contact with the divine, and it's time to channel that divine energy into your life. Mm -hmm. and Can I just I say think, one thing? Yeah. Diane and I have been in a, in a course, and it just came to me. They say, chocolate or vanilla, choose. And I don't know if you knew about that, but you brought the ice cream. Chocolate or vanilla, choose. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. I didn't know about that. Those are really the two yeah. simplest things that I know how to do that. That'll help me to remember choose, chocolate yeah. or vanilla, choose to be happy. Right, right. And that's that's really all it, all it needs to be is just a choice. Choose. In fact, I can tell you another story about that too. Uh, way back in the beginning of all this, mm -hmm. it, there was a situation that I was in. I was working with this guy cleaning apartment buildings. I was just the grunt work. Yeah. Um, and for a period of weeks, I would go in, I'd do my job, and it seemed like every single day he found some reason to criticize me, to find yeah. some fault with what I was doing. It got to the point where it was not fun to be there. Yeah. And then one day I made a choice. I'm going to choose to be happy. I don't care what happens, I am going to be happy today, even if it means I have to walk away from the job. I'm going to choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I went in to work that day, the guy didn't say a word. It was freaky. 
It's like he, he acknowledged that I was there. He, he directed me to what he wanted me to do that day. But other than that, he left me alone. Uh -huh. And I got home that night and I said, wow, that actually worked. <laughs> and then the next day I tried it again. It's like, okay, I am choosing to be happy. And I knew at that point I needed to be very firm in my decision, at least at that point, because it was in the beginning. I was not used to getting my way. I was not used to manifesting things. So I knew that at least for me at that time, I needed to be very firm in my decision. I choose to be happy today. I don't care what happens. Even if I have to walk away from it, I am going to be happy. And you know what? It worked a second time too. And it worked again and again and again. And eventually the job became pretty nice to be at. Cool, man. All for making a choice. So. At this point, we have some extra time, so if anybody has any other questions, I'm free to, free to cover that. Oh, yep. Thank you, Matt. Kind of that. Thank you, Seth. Uh, you know about Bob McFerrin? Yep. The song, Don't Worry, Be Happy? Uh -huh. I had a workshop with him. I said, hey, Bobby, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but, you know, it's, yeah. it's works, man. I, I love music. And, uh, Bob is, I yeah, that song came out kind of close in time to to when that was happening oh. i i think it came out later than that but it was relatively right. close yeah cool. so one of the things in that workshop is yeah. why did you choose chocolate if you chose chocolate or why did you choose vanilla well and everybody goes with all their yeah. reasons and finally they get to i chose chocolate because i chose chocolate there doesn't have to be a reason yeah. right that's what i wanted that's what yeah chocolate yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So, okay. This kind of reminds me of you can talk to yourselves mm -hmm. and um, and tell them what you want them to do mm -hmm. in your body. You oh, your cells! I thought she said selves. I thought, how many personalities do you have? Several. How it's do called you, lost person. Yeah, I, 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 I do that. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> do you talk to yourself? Uh, I don't talk to the cells, but sometimes I do talk to another self within. It's like, okay, come on, genius. You're supposed oh, to be able to self. figure this out. What are we going to do? <laughs> Not one of those she's, she, she's saying C E L L S. Yeah, correct? yeah, okay. I know. Like skin cells or liver cells. Yeah, I've or, done that. Yeah. Cells, right. yep. so my mm -hmm. knee hurts. I talk to my knee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, what do you need? Yep. I ask usually. There's a phrase if you if you focus on your process, the outcome will take care of itself. Yep. Mm. And a lot of what you're talking mm. about is a is the process right yeah. and we, right. human nature is we tend to want to focus on the outcome right not yeah. so much the, right. the process about a year i think it was a year and a half ago i think it was january of last year i wrote a 30-day email sequence for my for my subscribers um, that was designed to help us get out of the anxiety of i'm doing this to get a result and i've done it where's my result why hasn't it happened yet yeah. And there's a lot of us that get into that, try to jump to the end kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the 30 day process, day one was, okay, we're doing too much. We need to take a break. Your assignment for today is just to relax. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that was day one. Mm -hmm. And then as, as we went through the 30 days, eventually it got to the point of, okay, now focus on something pleasurable like we did in, in tonight's thing and just focus on right now, this moment is good. And do that as often as you can and just focus this mo right now, this moment is good. And eventually, of course, I sped it up here, but eventually it got to the point of now expand that out into thinking that, OK, this moment is good and the next hour is also going to be good. Or at least I ex I'm going to at least pretend yeah. that it's going to be good. And then eventually it gets to the point at the end of just walk through life pretending that everything is absolutely perfect no matter what you see. Mm -hmm. In the, if you're in a real, ser um, something happens and you're just in the moment and there's no other time. I did that when I had um, radiation. I zapped those 
good bad cells and i kept protecting the good cells and there wasn't any i was in i had to be right in the moment you're doing it now and now and now and now and for six weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think i really believe that that I, there was a sense of urgency here you know right. we don't have time to so i did yeah. it what I would say how what I've been talking about tonight would apply to that situation is that ideally, and I will say ideally, you prepare for it ahead of time. You prepare yourself by making that contact with the divine self so that it is readily accessible to you. So that when you are in a situation where you need to react to something very quickly, you've already got that connection to come with you. Mm -hmm. And then that way you can bring it into the moment and just say, okay, the divine is with me. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on making this happen. Mm -hmm. right. That's the ideal. Now, if you are, run into that situation before you're ready, then the only thing I can say is you get through it the best you can and then you prepare for the next time. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are some times that something comes up before we're ready for it. Yeah. And so the best thing for all of us to do is to practice that meditation, practice that connection with the divine, practice it and get those symbols so that you can make that connection as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so that you're ready for oh, it when it yeah. comes up. Mm -hmm. See, Alan, can you comment more about the? Because Bay was very, very big on this. He believed that the most important thing was faith. Can you comment on the faith, faith part of the process, how important that is? It, it, it is the most important part. In fact, the only reason for the other steps is to get us to the faith. Right. Uh, the relax, imagine, trust. Mm -hmm. The only reason for the relax and the imagine step is to get to the trust. Um, and the reason for those is because I found that that really is the easiest way to shift our belief, to shift our faith, mm -hmm. so that we can believe that this thing that I've been imagining can actually happen. Because when you... Mm -hmm. Do it well enough, and you relax deeply, you imagine in, in detail. When you're done with that session, like I said, I was visualizing a new relationship, half hour to an hour a night. When I was done with that, I felt like I had just been with the person that I was imagining. Mm. I felt I had the real physical experience mm. that this is real. This is a part of my life. This is who I am now. And it's like, okay, she's not with me right now, but I know it's going to come. And because of the experience, right. they, they say the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between a real experience and one that's vividly imagined. Mm -hmm. And as one of my subscribers said, that's BS. Of course, the subconscious mind knows what's happening around you because it's the one filtering it. And I agree. However, after the fact, the memories of the two are essentially the same. Yeah. And it's the memories that we have of experiences that shift our belief system, that directs us to believe one thing over something else. And so the reason for all of this is that if we have memories of always being criticized, if we have memories of trying and failing, if we have all these memories mm -hmm. of negative experiences, that's what creates negative beliefs. And so if we want to have positive beliefs, one of the easiest ways of doing it is to create positive memories. And if it's something that we're not able to do in the physical world, then at least we can do it in the mental world. Uh -huh. So, Alan, right. Alan, when Rose was asking about the cells, you should tell her the story of when you cut yourself really bad with a knife and I just watched you go like this and basically heal it in a day. Okay, I'll, I'll tell the story. I wasn't actually talking to the cells, but I was visualizing. So kind of going into the emergency situation thing. Um, I was trimming a candle. Okay, the candle had burnt weird and it got to the point where I tried to light it and the wax on the sides just w yeah. wiped it out. So I was just gonna cut it off. Well, I wasn't very careful and I grabbed the candle and I'm grabbing the knife and then it slipped. And the only thing that stopped it was the bone of the finger. So I had cut the skin pretty, pretty deeply down to the bone. And so I grabbed, grabbed something to 
hold, hold it with to soak up the blood. And I was visualizing, okay, it is healed. It is healed. It is healed. Mm -hmm. And within, what was it, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, mm -hmm. no, more, no more bleeding. Wow. And it healed up pretty quickly, and I had absolutely no pain. Wow. In fact, it wasn't a complete anesthesia experience because I could still feel the skin next to it. I could still feel it just wasn't any pain. Mm. But that's also, again, I had practiced plenty of times right. before that oh, point so that when it came to that point, I knew what to do. And it wasn't so much that I was talking to the cells, but I was visualizing, I was communicating with them with a visual image, not necessarily with words. But if words are what is comfortable for you in communicating, nothing wrong with that. So I think we're good. I appreciate everyone being here. Again, I hope that I have done something good. Feel free to grab a book on your way out. And if you have any questions about anything, this topic or any other, I'm happy to do whatever I can to help and serve. Thank you, Alan. It's always a delight when you come. Uh -huh. Always.